Hello, and welcome to Worship with Asbury United Methodist Church. I'm Lindsay Kirkpatrick, the pastor of Asbury, and it's just a joy to be able to welcome you to worship with us today. First off, I just want to give a big shout out to all the folks at Asbury who gave such a great send off to the teachers of Turner Elementary. Turner Elementary has been our partner school this past year. We've been mentoring um, the most at-risk kids there at the school. And before the pandemic, we had already been collecting school supplies, teacher appreciation gifts uh, for the teachers there. And so just in the past week, we were able to go to Turner and share those as the teachers are coming to collect their things and kind of get their room done um, for the summer. Uh, they're able to come up to the school and see all of this. And they were just so grateful um, that we were thinking of them, even in the midst of everything that's going on. So way to go, Asbury, for sharing the love of Jesus Christ with Turner Elementary. I also want to say, if you have a graduating senior in your household, then please let us know Email diana at office at asbury.cc. Send us a few pictures of your grad. Give us their full name, the school they're graduating from, and their plans for what's next. We're going to be having several celebration Sundays over the course of the summer for confirmation and for graduation. Uh, but we want to go ahead and highlight those seniors who are graduating here in the next couple weeks as well, in addition to that. So if you can send us a couple of their pictures, we'll be able to share those in an upcoming worship service. I also want to let you know that we're going to be releasing our plan for relaunching in-person worship later this week. So keep an eye out for that communication. So here we are to worship together, and I just encourage you to participate in worship. Um, you'll see a link to a connection card. Go ahead and fill that out. Let us know you're here. Uh, you can share prayer requests with us. Let us know if you're interested in joining the church. And um, you can pray along with us when prayers are said. Sing along as the uh, songs are being sung. It's a way that you're offering not only your time to the Lord, but also the best of yourself. So thanks for worshiping with us today and welcome. We sing with me this morning. Let's make a joyful noise to the Lord together. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, Lord, you've captured me. And I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty in my brokenness. And I've got true love instead of
Good morning, friends. Gather around for the children's message. So do you know what this is? This is a bottle of perfume that my husband gave me years ago. I don't use it very often, but I love the way it smells and that the bottle has a heart on it. It's very special to me, so I only use it on special occasions and try not to waste it. I certainly wouldn't go around squirting it in the air using it as an air freshener. Well, I'm showing this to you because it reminds me of this morning's Bible story from the book of Mark in the New Testament. Jesus was in Simon's house in the town of Bethany and was sitting at a table. A woman came by with an alabaster jar full of very expensive perfume. It might have looked like this. She broke the jar open and poured the perfume on Jesus' head, all of it, on Jesus and only on Jesus. After she did this, the woman was scolded by others in the room and accused of being wasteful. They said that she could have sold it for a lot of money and then given that money to help the poor. But what did Jesus say? Jesus said that she had done a beautiful thing for him and recognized this as a good thing. This woman did what she could to show her love for him while he was still there. There were three things that happened when the woman blessed Jesus with the perfume. She was a blessing to Jesus and she shared her love and devotion to him. And she was a blessing to the house they were in as the beautiful smell of the perfume spread throughout the house. And she is a blessing to us today as we hear about her loving act of worship in the Bible. Jesus wants us to honor him in any way we are able. The woman in the story honored him by blessing him with the expensive perfume. What can we give to Jesus to show our love for him? I don't think he wants my fancy perfume or your favorite stuffed animal or an autographed baseball. I think he just wants us to give him our very best. We can honor him by praising God through singing, worshiping him, praying, reading our Bibles, being kind and helpful to others, and in so many other ways. The woman only wanted to give Jesus her best. When Jesus looks into your heart, what does he see? Do you try to give him your best too? So next time you smell a beautiful scent in the air, stop and thank Jesus for it and remember to always try and give him your best. Will you pray with me now? Dear Jesus, thank you for your never-ending love. Help us to always give you our best. In Jesus' name we pray, and together we all say, Amen. This is the time in our service where we join together in prayer. Will you pray with me? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we give you this day, for we know that every day we have was given from you. We thank you for each blessing in our lives. We thank you also for the blessing of being invited into a deep relationship with you, not just a, a casual, hey, how are you, thanks, goodbye kind of relationship, but a deep one that's real and raw and um, honest. And so help us to become more and more vulnerable with you, to be real with you, to be bold with you, um, because the more we do that, the more depth of relationship that we actually find ourselves in with you, Lord. And we just thank you for loving us enough to want that and to make it available to us. We pray that we would not only be bold with you, but we would also be bold for you, that you would give us opportunities to share the good news with word and deed, that you would give us opportunities to serve in your name and to grow in our walk with you, Lord. We just pray that you would help us to be bold for you. And, and Lord, we, we ask that uh, you would forgive us of our sins. We know uh, that there's things that we need to be broken of. And so we ask you to do that. And, and so we thank you that as we um, come to you to repent, that you do offer us forgiveness and grace and a fresh new start every single time. Thank you, Lord. Use us in the world however you see fit. We want to be a part of your kingdom work, Lord. We ask for wisdom and guidance as decisions are made. We have some tough decisions ahead of us, each one of us, just knowing what's right and not. And 
we pray, Lord, that you would guide us in all of that. And we trust that you are taking care of us and working for our good. So we thank you, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we encourage you to take a moment and to participate in our offering this morning. An offering is an act of worship, just like praying is and reading scripture and singing. Um, and it's a way that we give a portion back to God of what he has given to us, a way of us saying, you know what, Lord, like, um, I don't know how all this is going to work out, but I trust that you're taking care of me. And so some of us give just when we can, um, occasionally others of us give monthly, some of us give weekly, however you do that. We, we want to thank you for your continued, um, faithfulness, uh, during this time of uncertainty. Uh, there are four ways to give. You can, can write a check and send that to the church. You can also go to our uh, website online, www.asbury.cc, and click the Give Now button. There's a secure portal there that you can give your gift. You can give in the way that's, frankly, the most beneficial to the church, and that's to get on your own bank online and to set up an automatic gift. And then finally, you can give through text message. You just type uh, this number into your phone and the amount that you want to give and it's as simple as that. Thank you so much for offering your gifts today. You know, there have been times where it's been really hard for me to decide whether to play it safe or to risk going out and trying something new. I gotta tell you, like I feel like that's my whole life right now as we start to kind of 
reopen things again. There's all these questions about what's okay and what's not okay for us and for kids and for grandparents and the whole nine yards. I, I, I bet you share some of that feeling with me too. But, but before all the pandemic stuff, uh, you know, I would even have the same kind of internal struggle with just uh, regular old adventures and opportunities. Like I remember um, many years ago, probably a decade ago, Kenton and I uh, were trying to decide whether to go parasailing. And we were somewhere for one of his academic conferences and we had the opportunity and I was nervous and I had never done anything like that before. Certainly, I'm not like a skydiver kind of person. And I had these thoughts of like, man, I could be up there dangling and this could all go south all of a sudden. And then what, you know? But we decided to go for it. And it was one of the most fun, memorable experiences of my life. And it was special that we got to do that together because we went up together. Um, and there have been other times too, times when I haven't gone for it. Times when I really wasn't sure which was the right way to go. And like, like when I... <sighs> when I've seen someone for the first time that I hadn't seen in a while and there had been this disconnect in our relationship and I could go for it. I could bring that up and try to resolve it. And yet in the moment, I'm not sure how it'll be received or whether it might make things worse. And so I just, I don't say anything at all. And then of course there's other times, uh, like with skydiving, for example, where it doesn't matter how hard you're gonna try to convince me, I am never gonna go for it. I am always gonna stay on the safe side of that one, no matter what. Well, we are in a season right now, of course, where we are prioritizing physical safety, absolutely. And, and though we have some different ideas about how to do that, we all agree that saving folks' lives and keeping people physically safe is a top priority. But here in these last couple of weeks, we have been talking about safety in another context. And it has to do with our spirit life. That we can get in a prayer rut where we tend to only pray safe prayers. Like we say things like, Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for my home and my family. God, forgive me of my sins. Be with me. Help these people that I'm worried about. And these are all good prayers and we should all keep those going and that's always going to be a part of our prayer life it's a part of my prayer life but but when safe prayers are all that we pray it means that our expectations about god actually lower um and we don't actually see the biggest things that god is doing what's outstanding from god because we're not praying about outstanding we're praying about ordinary we're keeping it safe where we can't get disappointed with God, where we don't have to reach or stretch or risk. And so last week we talked about how that first dangerous prayer that we are called to pray along with King David in Psalm 139 is this, where he prays, Lord, search me, test me out. I am an open book, Lord. See if there's anything in me that offends you that is unbecoming of a child of God. This week, we move on to our next bold prayer. These kinds of prayers, they just take it up a notch with God. They take us to a place of calling, of kingdom purpose. Because remember, our calling is always outside our comfort zone or else God wouldn't have to be calling us to it. And so the prayer I wanna share with you today is probably the prayer that I have been the most afraid to pray in my entire life, the one we maybe look forward to the least. It's also one of the prayers that means the most to God. And it's a prayer that a woman in the Gospel of Mark prayed in, in her own way so long ago. And so let's head over to Mark chapter 14 this morning to find her story, okay? I'm reading from the CEB version of the Bible. You're welcome to read whatever version you've got that you like that works for you. Mark is going to be after Matthew and before Luke, about three quarters of the way in your Bible. We're going to be in Mark 14, reading the story of something that happened to Jesus a couple of days before he died. Okay, so Mark 14, beginning in verse 1. Here we go. It was two days before Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. So that means it's the Tuesday of Holy Week. 
The chief priests and legal experts, through cunning tricks, were searching for a way to arrest Jesus and kill him. But they agreed that it shouldn't happen during the festival, otherwise there would be an uproar among the people. Oops. Jesus was at Bethany visiting the house of Simon, who had a skin disease. He was a leper. During dinner, a woman came in with a vase made of alabaster and containing very expensive perfume of pure nard. She broke open the vase and poured the perfume on his head. Some grew angry. They said to each other, why waste the perfume? This perfume could have been sold for almost a year's pay and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. Jesus said, leave her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. You always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do something good for them, but you won't always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body ahead of time for burial. I tell you the truth that wherever in the whole world the good news is announced, what she has done will be told in memory of her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Okay, so let's set the scene. Jesus is eating at Simon the leper's house, a place that no self-respecting Jew would ever go. And he's going there, he's there with his disciples, and a woman walks in. And she's no ordinary woman. A woman who had the means to own a bottle of perfume that cost a year's wages. Today, that would be like a bottle of perfume worth $31,000. I mean, can you imagine? I can't. It got me wondering, what kind of woman would spend that kind of money on perfume? It's like a car. <laughs> And that's when I discovered in, in my study of this passage, there's only one kind of woman who would spend that on a bottle of perfume. And in a society that was a thousand times more modest than our own, where relations were not even spoken of, the only women who spent money on perfume at all were women who worked at night. And the perfume was their calling card. It was their way of letting folks know without having to say a word, letting them know that they were open for business. So that tells us a few things about this woman. First of all, she's very successful to be able to afford perfume as expensive as that. And second, it shows us what this moment is really about for her. When she broke the bottle of perfume, she was making yet again a silent statement that that kind of life was over for her. That she had had an encounter with Jesus Christ that was so life-changing and transformative that she had invited Jesus to break her of anything that wasn't of him. And her job was not godly. And so by breaking the bottle, breaking the most important tool that she used to promote her business, it was allowing herself to be poured out without even saying a word. She was letting him know. She was letting herself be broken, just like her perfume bottle had been. And that's our second dangerous prayer. First, we ask God to search us. Now we learn that we have to pray, Lord, break me. Ugh. That's a prayer that says, Lord, if there is any sin in me, if there is anything in me that doesn't radiate Jesus Christ to the world, if there is anything in me that doesn't reflect you to others, if there's any barrier I'm allowing in my life between me and you, break me of it. Pour it out of me. I want it gone. Break me, Lord. That's the prayer. You only pray that prayer if you want to go as far as God can take you. I'm telling you, friends, otherwise, for the love of do not pray that prayer if you only want to go part way with God. Only pray, break me, Lord, if you want to go as far as God can take you. Because this is the prayer that is truly wanting to be made into the image of Jesus Christ. This is the prayer for saying, I want to look like Jesus to everyone I meet. This is the prayer of, I am going to go full force, head first into the call that God has on my life. And I don't care if that means that I have to move or change everything about my life 
or change jobs or whatever, no matter what I have to give up, if I have to change what I'm willing to talk about or not willing to talk about, even if the reasons or the ways I'm doing things in my life has to change, I'm in, Lord. That's the point. When you're ready to pray, break me, Lord. This woman had been saved by the love of Jesus Christ. And she was willing to give up her livelihood, to break open and pour out everything in her that wasn't of God so that she could live the life that God wanted for her. And so, so when we're ready, we can pray along with her silent prayer, Lord, break me. And when we pray this prayer, the words we fill the rest of that sentence in with are our stumbling blocks in life. Break me of any selfishness. Break me of pride. Break me of any blind eye that I've been turning. Break me of any habits that are not helpful, any ways that I'm not loving, any self-reliance that should be God-reliance. Break me of any hidden thing I'm missing, anything that is not of you. And, and I got to tell you where the search me prayer, God tends to answer that pretty quick. The break me prayer, that happens on God's time. And many times it can take us years of wrestling with something, getting more and more brittle ourselves before we will finally snap and let God break us of it. Here's a way that it has happened for me. I had a source of unhappiness in my life and it didn't make any sense to me why it was there because I had a great life that I loved. But I found myself frustrated often and wondering what I was getting wrong because I compared myself to others for a long time. And I would say in my own mind, how come they seem to always be able to do this or that? And we haven't. I mean, why do I feel like we can't get ahead? Meanwhile, I would often pray, break me, Lord, break me of anything that's not of you. And yet from time to time over here, I'd still find myself feeling like I wasn't keeping up with others like I should be or, and I mean, like I was super happy for them. It wasn't that, it was just, you know, over here, why aren't we, whatever it was. And I pray, break me of anything that isn't of you, Lord. And one day I had had it. I could sit there and name blessing after blessing in my life. I could tell you how my life had never been better. And yet I could still go through a long litany of things in my head that I was upset I hadn't yet gotten and there, was no reason for it at all. I knew I had a great life. And that's when it hit me like a ton of bricks. Oh, that very last commandment right there at the end, thou shall not covet. And I realized in a moment of sudden clarity that I was guilty of coveting. And no wonder I had some unsettled unhappiness in my life because I had given something that wasn't of God. I had given it space in my heart and in my mind. And finally, after years of praying for God to break me, I was ready for that to be broken in me and poured out and done with. And there's this natural progression. After we've gotten comfortable praying, search me, Lord, search my words, my thoughts, search my deeds and my attitudes, Lord, search my desires, those things that I'm thirsting for and search my plans that I'm nurturing along, search all of me, Lord. Then we get to this place where we feel that pull inside of us and the words that we wouldn't probably ever choose to pray ourselves, they just come out from us, Lord, break me. Break me of anything that isn't of you. Maybe you already feel completely broken and poured out. You don't have to feel bad about that. God can do something with us when we're broken. In fact, he can do everything with us when we're broken. If you already feel that brokenness, then just invite him to do with it whatever he wants, to bring beauty from ashes, pottery from the clay, and if you aren't in that place, but you're ready to go as far as God can take you, use this week to begin making a regular part of your prayer life, the simple and yet not easy prayer. Break me, Lord. That's bold. It's a leap and it'll change your life. 
In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. to worship with you today and I hope that we get to worship again together next Sunday. If you, uh, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go ahead and follow our Facebook page. Um, fill out that connection card. You see the link to it and let us know you're with us and share whatever questions you've got about um, worshiping with Asbury because we would love to connect more with you. Now I want you to go this week and however way you're going, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, even if you're at home contemplating one-on-one -on -one with the Lord, go like Jesus has transformed your life. And remember that God goes before you to show you the way, behind you to keep you moving, above you to watch over you, beside you to befriend you, and within you always to give you peace. Amen. <laughs>